We gather here today, Lord, we come first and foremost to thank you. Not only to thank you for the excitement of today and the memories we'll make here and now, but also for everything you've blessed us with along this road. Thank you for blessing us with supporting families, loyal friends, and devoted teachers over the course of our lives, and for the experiences we've had together that have shaped us into the people we are today. We truly have received far more than we deserve, and we will not take these blessings for granted. Lord, I pray for each and every person in this room going into this new season of life. For my fellow graduates here this morning, I pray for wisdom going into the future, that we would desire to constantly grow and shine your light for those around us. Life isn't always going to be easy, but I pray we be looked to the example your son provided, remaining faithful through countless trials. I pray that those of us with family or friends here today who are moving on can set aside to take a smile and look forward with joy. I pray most of all for my teachers, that they'll be able to adapt to much quieter classrooms in the wake of my absence. Lord, this truly is an amazing day. On behalf of the senior class, I want to thank you for giving us one another. Though most of us will part ways after today, it's been amazing to come to know and love each of these unique people over the course of the past few years. May we carry the joy of these blessings both today and tomorrow until we meet you face to face. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
ये मैं भी सी On behalf of the Arcana Butler Board of Education and Administration, it is my pleasure, Superintendent, to welcome family, friends, staff, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2022 to their Arcana High School incident ceremonies. I want to make sure that I take this opportunity to thank everyone in attendance today for your support of our graduates, our students, our staff, and our administration. Uh, thanks for speaking to our Arcana Board of Education members, Eric Moore, Kelly Norris, Beverly Della, Mark Tracks, and Joe LaMaster. And I'd like to thank the administrative team behind me, Treasurer Matt Huffman, Elementary Principal Joey Pichy, Pichy, Jason Vince, and especially High School Principal Mr. Jason Stephan. Family, friends, and faculty, it's because of your support and your encouragement that the class of 2022 has made it to this point and is with that continued support will be successful in the future. I say this every year, but students, while we may not fully comprehend or appreciate it now, we know that you are blessed here at our family to have family, friends, teachers, coaches, and principals who care for you and want to see you succeed. So class of 22, if you would please join me in showing appreciation for those who are here surrounding and supporting you today. Graduates, it's a special day, obviously. 13 years of school and a rite of passage for you as you start a new journey, a new chapter in your lives. For your parents and teachers, it's time to reminisce about how much you've grown and how to, and to express your hopes and expectations for your future. It's been my pleasure to get to watch you grow into young adults. And I enjoy the many athletic events, band, choir, concerts, drama productions, art shows, and follow your many academic successes that have showcased your many, many talents. In the past 13 years, you've made many, many memories, enjoyed many experiences, dealt with challenges, shared laughter, made some tears, and ultimately survived the daily trials and tribulations of school. Along with learning many academic lessons, as our little here at Arcana, you've learned about the values that represent what we call the trophy leg, integrity, work ethic, Positive attitude, leadership, service, responsibility, honesty, perseverance, respect, trust, determination, and accountability. We believe that these values are those that will not just benefit you in school, but also benefit you in life moving forward. And nothing gives your teachers, principals, coaches, and myself more joy than to hear your success stories after graduation. This commencement ceremony marks my tenure as superintendent. And I continue to feel honored to lead and serve the district in which I graduated from and community for which I grew up. I recall, even though it's been a few years, I do recall back in 1994, the four years of high school and how things could go fast enough. And increasingly every year I've gotten, as I've gotten older, I think to myself, how can I go any quicker or any faster than yet does? So I'm going to definitely date myself here. And so I'll look out to the crowd because I'm not sure if. Our graduates can help me out, but does anybody recall the movie from back in the day, Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Any graduates maybe watch that one? I'm not sure if you've, if you've seen that or if you thought that it would be quotable enough for a graduation. Um, but recently I watched it and had the opportunity to watch it again. It's different than you watch it from the eyes of someone who's a little bit older, maybe not as funny as I thought it was, but still some quotable lines. Um, in summary, if you've never watched that one, the storyline is uh, uh, high school kids, Ferris Bueller, skips a day of school, goes on many kids to drop, uh, Chicago, including a Cubs game, his sister trying to get in trouble, the principal's trying to chase him down, and all the while, his loving and supporting parents uh, are believable that he's, that he's truly sick. So he survives the day out, gets his principal, his sister learns a good life lesson, and has fun with you. Ditching the school day. In the end, he's reflecting and, uh, and he's talking to the camera. And what I recall was, oh, I'm going to have to use that for graduation because it's true, especially again, 10 years as your superintendent now. And he says, Life moves pretty fast. 
If you don't stop, look around every once in a while, you could miss it. And it's true. So these four years may seem like they drag on forever. You're glad you find it there. I'll tell you, the order you get, the quicker each year goes by. So ladies and gentlemen, if the lead does move fast, don't get up. Don't get too caught up in doing things so fast. You're growing up too fast. You forget to stop, take a look around, and enjoy the ride. As you leave today, you're going to embark on a new adventure and down your own paths. Some of you will immediately join the workforce. Several of you will be working here in Dark County. We have graduates who plan on attending a trade school or two-year institution, such as the Hobart Institute of Welding, Edison State, or Sinclair. We have graduates who will be attending college closer to home, maybe at Wright State, IUs, Miami, UC, UD. And we have some graduates who go a little bit further to Kentucky. Or the University of South Carolina. In all, pretty intelligent class, listen to this, in all, the class of 22 has been awarded over $1.1 million in scholarships. <laughs> in Chris, we have students who take on the College Credit Plus courses and look to earn a, an associate's degree. We have four of those students who have earned an associate's degree in liberal arts degree from Sinclair, Ryan Martin, Isabella Daniel, Tyler Fair, and Eliza Smith. Well done. And each year we're all always honored to have graduates who've heard that call. And we begin serving our country in the United States Armed Forces. So proud to recognize Colin Sloan, who we had to the Ohio Army National Guard, and Isaiah Shelton, United States Marine Corps. Much all of you in those different endeavors. Whether you have a plan in place, or maybe you're still sitting out there and you just heard that and you have, I have no idea what I'm going to do, I'll figure that out day by day tomorrow. That's okay. You'll find a place. But I do like to share, and I started doing this probably the last few years, um, and I tried to narrow it down so that I'm not too long, but my, the several B's that I can think of in years to come, no matter what job or career path you choose, I think they can be helpful. <clears throat> Be kind to others, respect others. Love your family, love your neighbor, love your country. Be productive citizens, educate yourselves about what's going on around you in your community, in your country, and make sure that you vote. Be dependable, be a person, do what you say, say what you're gonna do in life and learn to respect of others. Take time to be appreciative, show appreciation for those in your lives, parents, families, coaches, teachers, friends. Be happy. There's a lot of negativity that goes along in the world, things that you can't control. Control is the thing you can control, and that's using to, to wake up and be positive and be happy in the end, even in the face of some adversity. Be prepared for anything, whether it's a new job or career, a winter storm, or having enough uh, toilet paper during a pandemic. Be prepared for anything. And be you. God created each and every one of you for a purpose. As Mr. Stephen says, go be you, God. Best version of you. As a proud Arcana alum, I'm going to be the first to welcome you to the Arcana alumni. We are blessed to have grown up in such a caring community and school. And while some of you may stay in the area and some of you may move far away, you can always call Arcana home and be welcome back. So, in closing class of 2022, you may make positive memories during your time here at Arcana Vice. So cherish those memories and know that you'll make many more in the future. May God bless you. Again. Forever, walking, oil, and truth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. At this time, we'd like to have our commencement address to our speaker here. Our guest speaker today is Major Candace B. Shuey. Major Shuey is a 1999 graduate of our camp. 2003 graduate of LaSalle University with a bachelor's of arts degree in French and secondary education, a 2006 graduate of the Catholic University of Columbus School of Law, and a 2014 graduate of the George Washington University Law School. She is currently an acquisitions attorney in the acquisitions law division of the Air Force Material Command Law Office at Wright Pack Air Force Base in Ohio. As program counsel, she supports the national defense strategy by providing legal support for the sustainment and modernization of the Air Force's F-15 and B-2 weapons systems. 
Major Shuji accepted a direct commission as an Air Force Judge Advocate in two, January 2007. She's admitted to practice law for the United States Supreme Court, the Court of Federal Claims, the United States Court of Appeals for Armed Forces, and the Supreme Court of Ohio. She has been deployed to CENTCOM, contracted to remain in Baghdad, Iraq, where she served as legal counsel to nine regional contracting centers in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and New Dawn, and to Special Operations Task Force East Africa, where she provided full legal spectrum and legal advice to the task force commander, his staff, and supporting commanders at five austere locations across three African countries. Please join me in welcoming the class of 1998 graduate, Major Candace D. Shu. Members of the Board of Education, teachers and staff of our Plano schools, family and friends of the graduates and in our Plano class of 2022, thank you for having me here to speak with you this morning. I am grateful and honored. As an alumnus of this institution, I appreciate being here at the This thing is significant in any young adult's life. The end of your high school career, when you leave the relative comfort of this place for somewhere else, when we heard a list of some of the places that you were going, some of you know what your path is and where you're headed next. Some of you might not, and that's okay too. But you're going somewhere else from this school. The vocabulary that sound that surrounds this part of your life, the end of your high school career, is very tough. First, there's graduation. You all graduated the moment you finished your diploma requirements. Do you guys remember the last test? Does everyone remember breathing a sigh of relief? when you finish that class. And the last day of school, maybe you felt a little trepidation, but mostly excitement that you were done. You did finish this 12, I just learned today, 13 year education that is the primary education. For me, it was 12. Apparently, you have another year of going to school days. <laughs> but um, once you completed those diploma requirements, you're technically a graduate. Now, this term, graduation, it has a backward looking connotation, right? It seems to to denote a culmination, something that has been done. And then there's today, the commencement ceremony, where we all come together to celebrate you individually and as a class for your accomplishments. Congratulations, by the way, you've done a lot. Um, and it's, it's a forward looking term, commencement. You're seeing the new edge of something, you're going somewhere. So, I'd like to take a second while you're standing here on the edge of something new and look around the gym to all of the adults here, all of the caregivers, the parents, grandparents, many of you who have helped shape the lives of these fine young souls sitting on the gym floor today, and say, bravo to you. Well done. You've poured a lot of love and commitment into these young people, and it shows. And please don't get upset with me from what I'm about to say. From where I stand, having graduated just over two decades ago, I know. Changes. From this podium, on this gym floor, as I look out at all of you, you all look the same. You're wearing the same black shapeless gown, right? The same black hat. You all have a tassel. Some of you have some distinguishing markers. You're all going to walk up here and get a diploma that's going to pronounce you a high school graduate. It's practically a level, level playing field, from my perspective, standing here. But to this community who's poured love into you, you will always be special, a promise, a hope. But out there in the real world, it's going to be a little bit different, and that's okay. Um, what you've done before still matters. After all, it shaped you, and maybe who you are today. But I will tell you this from this side of the stage what you do next matters more. Now, I'm confident your teachers have instilled in you a lifelong passion for learning. So I'm going to give you, for the next few minutes, a little bit of homework. It is really building on the education that you heard and Mr. Stevens' speech already. If you do this work, if you pay attention to these steps, I can't promise you an extraordinary life, but you'll certainly be on the right path for it. First, embrace learning for the fun of it. Right? You've gone to school every day maybe because you've been told you have to. But don't stop. Don't stand still. Hopefully, you know in the past 12 years that your education thus far has really been a foundation for lifelong learning. You should be thinking more questions than answers. So go out and find the answers and unravel mysteries with 
without using Alexa or your Google search function. Get out there and actually do it. Read a lot. Read books that intrigue you. Read books that look boring. Take book recommendations from your friends and your enemies. Walk into a library and browse the shelves. If you think about it, the library is one of the very last places where you can go and just be without any pressure to buy anything. Rather than that, take, take time to build a reading list that you can't complete in this life. And that list of books that people have told you that you cannot or should not read, ones that maybe you have been banned, as they say, or that aren't popular, those are the ones you should read first. Never be afraid to be exposed to ideas that are drastically different than yours. One of two things will happen when you read something that's different than your belief system. Either you will be solidified and know that your belief system is solid and just feel like you have become more solid in it, or maybe you'll open your aperture a little bit and realize that there's a different perspective, and that's okay too. But don't be afraid to be exposed to things that are different. Along those same lines, Find people who are different than you and take time to get to know them. On my first appointment to Iraq, I had to eat once or twice a week with our local national expert. He was a devout Muslim and an Iraqi citizen. I'm a devout Catholic from the United States. Our lives, our upbringings, could not have been more different. Our, our faith on the surface was radically different too. But in reality, we both believed in the same things. And it boils down to doing good and avoiding evil. And we were able to build a common ground on that. We broke bread, we drank tea, we shared conversation. I learned a lot about Iraqi culture and the Muslim faith, and I like to believe we learned a lot about our country as well. Not because I had to do it for my job, but because I wanted to be their safe. And I'm grateful for having had that opportunity. So take those opportunities and find people to end you. They may not be around on a regular basis. You may not seek them out, but I promise you it will be worthwhile. Whatever you do with your life, do it because you love it, not because someone's told you that you should. And don't consider what prestige will come from what you do. Just do it for the passion of doing it. Your generation, more than those before, has really lived on display. Selfies and TikTok videos, and person's value goes up with likes and views, and there's a lot of pressure from that. And trying to secure a seat at a university, maybe you picked up hobbies and community service that was meant to actually distinguish you from the past. But I urge you to resist the ever present temptation to do things to be seen. It takes the joy out of what you're doing when you have to chase recognition for it. So instead, consider how your passion improves the human condition and your community. That's the key to a passionate life. Expect to fail a lot. If you are not failing, then you're probably not dreaming big enough. Work hard, fall down, get up, work harder. If you are scared of failure, like I was when I was sitting here on this floor, if that fear keeps you up at night, I truly hope that you can get that first epic fail under your belt quickly so that you can set the fear aside and realize that the fear is much worse than the failure itself. Fear and failure is counterproductive because there's very little that you can do from preventing it to eventually find you. Failure happens to good people, and it's how you handle it, how you respond that really matters. Facing failure will be your opportunity to demonstrate your real character, your grit, your determination, your integrity. When you fail, don't hide it, don't run from it, don't try to cover it up, own it up to it. And then move on. Express gratitude, always. When you succeed, after all those failures that we just talked about, and you make it, and your success will be cyclical, you'll do it over and over again, there'll be plenty of opportunities to succeed. You might have the temptation to look up and proclaim, this is my success, I did this. I am different, I've done this on my own. But I challenge you to stop before you get too carried away. Be proud of your accomplishments, but also know that you didn't get there alone. Consider the advantages that got you there. Look around you. No, seriously, look around you. <laughs> Think about the family who supported you, right? This whole gym is packed with the community who loves you and has cared for you and has brought you here. They've shaped you. This school, these teachers have poured their heart and soul 
is it teaching you? And how does others that you're going to meet along the way, you haven't even imagined them yet, they're going to challenge you, love you, carry you along your journey. And don't forget your country. This weekend, we commemorate the lives of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines who did in their country, giving their lives to this country. And what they really give their lives to is your right to pursue happiness. Not to be happy, but to pursue happiness. So be grateful for that as well. And make sure you go out and do that pursuit and you do it with a grateful heart. Show gratitude. That's what makes a leader worth following. And finally, you're going to hear this a lot, and you've heard it already a few times today. Be kind. Always err on the side of kindness. You will never regret having been kind to someone. But you will regret the times that you weren't. Trust me. I have the same memories of a few times that I failed to think about other people's feelings. And I, or I may have failed to, to reach out and look out for someone who I know you can help. And I won't forget those. So make it a practice. Be conscious of it. Consider how your life and your example is serving your community and improving the lives of others. Be ambitious and change your things, but make sure that you're pulling up the people who are coming along with you. You will experience success over and over in life, and every time, be sure to turn around and help the next one who's coming up behind you. We are all connected. We rise and we fall together as a team, as a community, as a country. As Brother David Samuel Ross tells us, it's not happiness that makes us grateful, but gratefulness that makes us happy to lead a grateful life. I'm grateful for all of you. And as an alumnus of this fine school, I am proud of every one of you and the promise that you present to this community and this world. Boyle and Student, Trojan Class of 2022. Congratulations to you.
We will now have our valedictorian addresses uh, at this time. We will start with class today. I know what you're all thinking. How long is this going to take? <laughs> well, there's six of us, so I hope we keep this short. I would like to start by thanking everyone who made this possible for us. Our teachers, our principals, our counselors, our administration, our board members, our secretaries, our custodians, our lunch ladies, our chef, and all our staff members who have worked so behind the scenes that I couldn't think of you but you this list. Thank you. I would like to thank all the parents for everything they have done for us and all the things that they have done so that we might be here today. And I want to thank you, class of 2022, for all the good times that we had together, but for all these years. In elementary school, we made friends that we still have today. In middle school, it was a hard time for basically everyone. Nothing really mattered, but it sure did feel like it. <laughs> then we finally made it to high school, our freshman year, almost the opposite of middle school, where it felt like nothing mattered because we were the one man on the totem pole, but really it did. But we survived that, moved on to sophomore year. Did we even finish sophomore year? Because I can only remember half of it. <laughs> Regardless, we started junior year, and many of us started taking some difficult classes, aka all the classes that Mrs. Brandon teaches. <laughs> Underclassmen started looking up to us, and whether or not that was a good thing, I still don't know. But then we made it, senior year, the final stretch. We're finally going to finish high school. So we started on our classes, and there's no motivation. No motivation to do anything. A textbook case of senioritis. Of course, I think some of us had senioritis long before we were seniors. I think it affects us all the same. But here we are, a light at the end of the tunnel. Except it's not the end of the tunnel. It's just an LED plugging the ceiling because the tunnel continues. Many of us are looking at four or more years of schooling to go. Some of us are going to the workforce. Some of us the own forces. And so I'd like to leave you all with a quote from one of the most philosophical people I know of. Rumble stands from Gravity Falls. He says, when life gives you lemons, call them yellow oranges and sell them for double price. 
It may just seem like a funny saying, but I think you embody some important truth I want you all to know. That life is what you make it. And so, class of 2022, in whatever future endeavors you may have, I charge you to make your life and the things you do something you can be proud of. Thank you. We all have a welcome when you take from Alaska freshman year, but do not forget to repeatedly ask him 
talk about the possible impacts of this section is big. Sorry, go <laughs> Let's next revisit some of the memories from some of our favorite teachers and staff at the DX. One of our favorites, Mr. Powers, would always make us do push ups anytime we related to his class freshman year. Many people had to do push ups, especially with him. Not only that, but he was also a very also a jerk and a piece of the Almost everyone felt open to tell him anything and everything. Then, Mr. Taylor was always there for us when we needed him. Math was a difficult subject, and being able to have three separate teachers to ask questions was definitely helpful, but I do not know how Mr. Taylor could remember all the trade identities off the top of his head. <laughs> but somehow he didn't because we needed something. We had countless Christmas assemblies getting to watch the staff perform for 12 days of Christmas. We underlined it and put a star by it because we won the test with Mr. Grow. They made many jokes in Ms. Grant's class and she didn't laugh at me. <laughs> we got slapped on the back every time we walked into Mr. Pippin's class, we gossiped with Mrs. Slikers, and got Mr. Bryant off topic by the slightest mention of the goal of the military. <laughs> we took food from Mrs. Murphy, drove Ms. Whitaker and Say, especially Jensen. We enjoyed getting to see Mr. Pippin's big smile every single day. There are many other memories that we've had with the staff, but those are just a few of the highlights. Looking back on all of this, our grade is one of the most tight knit group of kids in our school. We all support each other and help each other out whenever one of us is struggling, and we never fail to have a good laugh. To think that after today, we will likely not all be in the same place again is hard to imagine. Some will move away, and some might stay close to home, but regardless of where you end up, we can always remember we are the class of 2022, or as our class teachers say, we're an IEP. The class of 2022 has a very bright future ahead of them. So far, they've already accomplished such great things as a group, and I cannot wait to see what everyone accomplishes in the future. Always try your hardest, set high goals, and as Mr. Stephan would say, always be the best version of you. The development of Jane will graduate 4.844 GPA. This ball shows at Bowling Green State University. Next, we'll hear from Mr. Stephen Oh, I don't know about you, but I know I'll say for the truth. 
the same back home as when I'm wild and free. Cause really, I don't care how far, I know you'll always be a part of me. Remember our first days. We spent together in this place. New faces came and went, some stay. We run together in this race. Each task we did, we did as one. We made too many friends. So I'll some so I'll in the end let's go.
there for all my three of my classmates. I used to believe being a uh, I used to think being a valedictorian was most prestigious thing I could accomplish when I had to do this. And up until a few years ago, I also thought valedictorian was two words. Valedictorian. Victorian is not a word. But let's get on that. I have learned that while it was an incredible accomplishment, and I don't want to minimize my peers' achievements, I believe the experiences and skills I've learned have been any more than my peers' I also learned that we are humans and not numbers. Last quarter, I got the first A minus I've ever gotten, and honestly, I thought it was the most disappointing thing that's happened in this school. You guys probably think I'm crazy, but I did. Whether it's grades or sports, you're not defined by whether or not percentage you get in your class. I say this a lot, and I use this in all aspects of my life, and it's definitely something I'm taking with me every school. With brains less than our accomplishments and the things we've learned through this time, and again, I'm not here. Thank you.
At this time, I want to thank our local community members and organizations who provide our scholarships for our students. At this time, we will now begin with the presentation of our local scholarships. It is now afternoon. Good afternoon, class 2022. Congratulations to you and your families as you soon will become graduates of Arcanum High School. On behalf of the Arcanum Lions Club, I have the privilege to present five $1,000 scholarships to deserving graduates. The Arcanum Lions Club's motto is very simple. We serve with achievements that these individuals have already shown thus far. The Lions Club members are hopeful that someday these individuals may, and many like them, will continue to give back to their communities. Your actions and achievements to this point is what helps build high standards of citizenship. The Arcanum Lions Club's Lonnie Norris Memorial Scholarship Award. Lonnie was a longtime educator and football coach in the Dayton area before returning home here to Arcanum where he was a member of the Arcanum School Board for 16 years. Lonnie passed away in 2013. This recipient has been chosen to receive a scholarship because of their outstanding academic achievement and participation in school, church, and civic activities. The Arcanum White Club is proud to present the Lonnie Morris Memorial Scholarship Award to Ian Baker. Next is the Ruth W. and Clayton H. Starr Memorial Scholarship Award. Ruth, Ruth Starr was a long-time teacher in the Arcana Public Schools and a leader in many civic organizations. Clayton Starr is a well-known educator, principal, and superintendent in the Arcana Public School System. The individual receiving the scholarship has displayed outstanding scholastic and citizenship qualities. The Arcane White Club is proud to present on behalf of Ruth W. and the Clayton H. Star Memorial Scholarship Award to Ellie Fowlett. <laughs> the Arcane White Club Scholarship Award. This recipient was chosen to receive the scholarship because of their outstanding academic achievement and participation in school, church, and civic activities, and their creative way to get a free plug in advertising. <laughs> this Lions Club is proud to present the scholarship award to Landon Haney. <laughs> The Arcane Lions Club Technical Scholarship Award. The recipient has been chosen to receive this scholarship because of their outstanding academic achievement and participation in school, church, and civic activities. The Arcane Lions Club is proud to present the Technical Scholarship Award to Eli Shelton. The Arcana Lions Club Citizenship and Service Award. The recipient has demonstrated citizenship and service to the school and community at high The Arcana Lions Club is proud to present the Citizenship and Service Award fellowship to Andrea Garrison. Senior boy or girl, she's saying, Andrea. Who 
was demonstrated characteristics of outstanding citizenship. We work with established in our, in our American Academy of Arcana High School by a former convention speaker, Captain Russ Vera, of the Navy Police Department. It's my pleasure at this time to present the Captain's Award to Taylor Gray. Good afternoon, I'm Victor Brayhammon. I'm a proud member of the class of 1975 and chairman of the Alumni Association. Congratulations to the class of 2022. For over 55 years, the Arcana Alumni Association has been awarded scholarships to deserving Arcana seniors. Thanks to the generosity of local businesses and our alumni. The Arcana Alumni Association scholarship is awarded to students based on academic achievement, school activities, community and church activities, along with a written essay. This year we received 27 applications, and we are proud to present five $1,000 scholarships to the following. Daniel Albright, please come forward. Ellen Trout, Brian Martin, Isabella O'Daniel, and Ezekiel Bright. Association over many years. He had an ongoing love for the school and graduates worthy for education and of our community. After his death, his family wanted a legacy to live on, so a fund was established and started for future years. Ted enjoyed band and choir while a student at Arcana. He graduated from Bowling Green State University post graduation. He valued a good work ethic. This year's recipient is Catherine Hoffman. The Arcana Butler PTO is giving away two $500 scholarships to two seniors for their service to Arcana. Um, it's my honor to present the two scholarships to Chad Hitzer and Tyler Huber. Memorial Scholarship is now in heaven. 
Good afternoon. I'll be presenting the Tiffany Ferguson Memorial Band Scholarship. Tiffany Ferguson was a 1994 graduate of Arcanum High School. She was very active in the band program at Arcanum, participating in jazz band, all county band, and solo and ensemble contests, in addition to her enrollment in band as a class. As a recipient of the 1994 John Philip Sousa Award, she was recognized as an outstanding band student in her graduating class. Following Tiffany's passing in June of 1994, memorial donations honoring her were collected to establish a scholarship fund. The award is made on the basis of academic achievement, level of involvement in the band, and musicianship. This year's recipient is Dan Albright. Accessibility and services for the disabled. 
Many years on Labor Day weekend, he would be at the local chair and go stand the telephone raising funds for most of our district research and services for Jerry's kids. Although he couldn't even scratch his nose, Joe excelled in the classroom and following high school graduation, obtained a bachelor of business degree from Wright State University, then worked remotely for several years as a software engineer for a large gaming firm. He learned at a very young age that education would be the key for his success and was high on his priority list. The graduate receiving this award today plans to attend St. Clair Community College to study automation and robotics. In loving memory of Joe to aid this graduate financially to further education, I am pleased to present Joe's scholarship to Jacob Warren. Congratulations. Next scholarship is the Richard Grave Family Scholarship. I'd like to ask Marilyn Grave to come forward while I present this. The Richard Grave Family Scholarship is in memory of Marilyn's husband, Dick. He was a beloved teacher and coach and principal here at our for 28 years. Many of you have heard the stories of the class of 1969. Dick was the coach that took the boys track team and basketball team to state and came back to New York. He earned the respect of many in this community with his motivational skills and his work ethic. This scholarship is awarded to a student that exemplifies those qualities of a dedicated varsity athlete and committed student. Receiving $1,000 from the Richard Gray Family Fund is Madeline Barrett. Next scholarship is the Richard Journal of Great Lakes Law, Science, and Policy. 
Maria passed the bar in the state of Florida and was practicing attorney in Polk County, Florida. In her honor and in her memory, Maria's friends and our family created this fellowship to help a deserving our family senior further their education. With that said, we would like to present a $2,000 scholarship to Isabella Lynn. Students that show passion, determination, hard work, and a willingness to succeed. This year's two recipients of the Shining Sports and Such Scholarship are Ellie Fowl and Chad Dixon.
Tyler Ray Phelan. Daniel James Albright.
back. Lana Lynn Fuller. Peyton Marie Garvin. Isaiah Joshua Gilmore. Taylor Courtney Gray. Harley Renee Griffin. Victoria Catherine Gross.
Madigan Reese Schaefer. Lydia Grace Shannon. Lydia Elizabeth Shearer. Eli Wayne Shelton. Isaiah Shelton. Thank <laughs> you. 
people watching on this.